Talking Heads with Psycho Killer. Hi, this is Adam Buxton. Hey there, this is Joe Gornish. Welcome to the Adam and Joe Breakfast Show here on Six Music. It's our penultimate show. Sean Keaveney's coming back on Monday, but we're here with you for three hours this morning and tomorrow morning. There's a little band uh, just playing in the corner of the studio. That's all we yeah. do here. We come in. Uh, the band, the band's called the Dirty Boys. Hey, you guys. Sounding good. Oh, nice. Sounding good this morning, dirty Wait. boys. They're, they're just jamming. Uh, that's what it's like here at the Big British Castle, the home of music that matters, important music. What is this bed? Bed? Lisa. What are you talking about? Apostrophe. Apostrophe. That's the perfect bed. <laughs> yeah. This is, the, this is the wake up, come on, hey, good morning bed. And then later on when things calm down a bit, James Brown comes out and uh, he plays behind yeah. us. Yeah. Now, life is difficult for David Bowie fans. Uh, just as a rule, right? isn't it? Having to endure his... All the ch 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 changes. All the changes, having to endure his latest appearances in, in movies and TV shows. Yeah. You know. What's he done uh, now? This morning it's been announced that he might appear in Doctor Who. Oh, don't As a do villain. That. Now this is something I want to talk about, because mm. Bowie, Joe and I are, are big Bowie fans. Yes, we are. And I, I was, certainly was obsessed by him for quite a long time, so we should chat about this a bit later on. Also coming up in the show... Uh, we have Text the Nation. It's mm. the nation's favorite feature. It's an opportunity for you, ordinary people everywhere, leading ordinary lives, uh, just to get in touch with us. Joe Cornish and Adam Buxton. Uh, we're, we're like geniuses, and we'll be <laughs> moderating a debate. I'm um, setting ourselves up. For a fall. For a fall, yeah. Um, we'll be moderating a debate between uh, people all over the... Please start talking, Joe. <laughs> start talking. Yeah, text the nation. It's, it's, it's the nation's favourite feature. It's where you text us and we read them out. Good. Uh, no one else does it. <laughs> we invented it. We invented but it. But there's, uh, of course, Serial Thriller coming up at uh, 8 o'clock. Lots of other stuff on the show. Great music this hour from the likes of Frente, Baby Chambles, and also The Shines. Uh, but here's some Swixy Swicks. That's how you say it, isn't it? That's correctly pronounced. Yeah, with Into a Swan. This is David Bowie on Six Music. That was Susie Sue. Into the Swan, David. Uh, I'll be, I'll be, <laughs> I'm calling myself David. Hello, you wouldn't this, do that. This is David Bowie, and, um... <laughs> Sounds less like David Bowie than my one does. It is, it's Dan. Oh, my one was a lot better than yours. Okay. Um, what, what, what I like most about this yes. program is the theatricality. I like the superlative nature of a lot of the tracks that we play on the show. The theatricality is superlative, I think. I've, I've just finished filming The Prestige with Christopher Nolan. <laughs> and Christopher Nolan, whoa, whoa, oh, oh. What kind of voice do you do on The Prestige with Christopher Nolan? In, in The Prestige, I play Nick, Nikola Tesla. <laughs> T and Tesla. Uh, uh, I'm trying <laughs> so, to do so Bowie's. Do it. I'm trying yeah. to do Bowie's voice in the Prestige. He, he plays a French guy. I do a sort of Germanic, slightly Germanic accent. Don't I? A, 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 I'm very interested what? in the. Oh, it's, it's very hard to do. It is my Ted's leg coils. I've got all sparky. <laughs> sparky. <laughs> yeah, but you <laughs> Is need that a line from it? Yes. <laughs> but you need the accent as well. Ma I had the accent. Mantez le cars. I've got all sparky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's difficult to be David Bowie, I tell you. Hey, this is Adam and Joe. This is BBC Six Music. Welcome to The Breakfast Show. We were just discussing the shocking news that David Bowie uh, might be in Doctor Who. Now, if you're a fan of sort of an icon, mm. especially someone who sort of reached the peak of their creative powers... Ben Shepard. I am talking about Ben Shepard here, yeah. Um, and also David Bowie. Yeah. Someone who reached the peak of their career maybe 10 or 15 years ago... <sighs> You know, David. He's he's had a couple well, no, of but that peak was so saying. high. Absolutely. You know, the absolute, you know, irreturnable right. pinnacle. Uh, then you've got to deal with what they do in their autumn years. Yeah, how yeah. they spin their career out. And with for Bowie fans, it's quite difficult. It is the rot set in? When would you say the rot set in? Right. I mean, something like Labyrinth was was difficult for some of us. Absolutely, not well, so difficult for Adam and me. We thought that was a, a, a good move. But <laughs> I, I remember the day when we first saw Labyrinth, and there was David wearing a big spiky wig, dressed as the Goblin King, juggling babies, singing oh. a song called "Dance, Baby, Dance." <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah. We were confused and worried, but then. But then after a few minutes, we thought, yes, no, this is good. We're happy this is a good this. new direction for David. <laughs> look, at the, look at the hair. On the Since man. then, it's been harder to kind of completely stay with David's creative decisions. 
Um, Do you know what the hardest thing for me has been? What? And let me just say briefly, put this in context, this is a man that meant everything to me. I mean, I'm a happily married heterosexual man with two lovely uh, sons, but I loved David Bowie just in every conceivable way. I was romantically, uh, uh, I adored the man. I would have mm, done anything mm. for him. I used to dream about him the whole time. And All right, steady. He was wonderful. Anyway, now... In the uh, twilight years of my life, <laughs> I see him doing all these extraordinary things. And the most painful thing for me is that he's chummed up with Ricky Gervais. Now, love Ricky Gervais or hate him. And they, I, I personally love the man. He's a comedy genius. Mm. And I mm. love uh, his he output. He gives all his profits to charity. Yeah. Which means he's lovely. I'm, I'm a sincere and uh, big fan of both The Office and Extras and um, yeah. many of Gervais's comedy efforts. Quite right. But sometimes you don't want two worlds to mix, do no, you? You, no. you? You want Ricky to stay in his uh, universe and Bowie to stay in his quite different rock universe. Exactly. And if he steps out of his Bowie castle and he starts chumming up with a comedian, yeah. not him. You don't. don't want him singing kind of songs written by Ricky Gervais. No, that was a painful telly. thing. For, I mean, Ooh. you know, I was very conflicted in that episode yeah, of Extras yeah. that Bowie appeared Because it was in. a good episode. It was a good episode. It was a funny song. But, but it was mixing things that maybe shouldn't be mixed. I was the uh, the jealousy. And now and Doctor the, Who. And now Doctor Can Who. Can we have him appearing in Doctor Who? I would rather he appeared in Doctor oh, Who. It's German night. It's German night. Time for some music now. Uh, we... Hey, uh, I bet you every breakfast show in the land has made that joke. What? Exterminate. No, we haven't. This is the Lars with There She Goes. That's a brilliant new joke. It's good acting yeah. as well. The Lars, There She Goes. They're quite happy about her leaving. They didn't really like her in the first place. It's good that she's gone. Uh, time's going to be freed up. You know, house to themselves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Adam and Joe on, on BBC Six Music. It's just coming up to 20 past seven. We've got to say a hello. A, a, <clears throat> a hello. A hello. <laughs> we don't usually say hellos, but we've had a lovely uh, evocative email from Giles. Joy which is Giles. Giles. Giles Rowland. He says, Dear Adam and Joe, have really enjoyed listening to your output these past two weeks. Please mention me and my brother Leo early on in your show as we are milking our herd of cows whilst listening to six music from five to eight every morning. Brackets, even Christmas Day. Wow. That's pretty good. That's quite a high tech farm, isn't it? They've got digital radio in their milking shed they've got dab actually in the cows really yeah the cow cows come with dab now i don't know if you knew that. so the cows occasionally just say uh no signal received yes across sometimes. their eyeballs yeah 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 you try and get the station that's the only annoying thing and they say digital radio no. <laughs> hey quickly <laughs> next record because <laughs> they're cows guys not gonna get better than that let's have the shins <laughs> That's Hooray, that's what's... What? That's good, what? isn't it? That's good. That's good, is what that is. Yeah, that's good. That's the shins with Turn Me On. This is Adam and Joe Turn on BBC on Six me. Music. All right, why, yeah, but... Why can't you read? Because I'm very, you know... Um, sexy. Sexy this morning. Very sexy this morning. That's a brilliant album, incidentally. The Shins album. I want someone to turn me on with their shins. Wincing the night away. Is that possible? <laughs> it is possible. It's easily possible. There's many, many websites dedicated to exactly that. Um, now, we're going to play a trail very shortly. And after that, are we going to come back or am I going to introduce it off the back of the trail? What? We're going to come back after the trail. <laughs> this is unorthodox. A trail usually comes immediately after a song or before a song. But, but we today, like to mix we're going to talk up. around the trail. Yeah, talking around the trail. Here's the trail. I wonder what the original Baby Love did sound like for it to be rejected by Barry Gordy. Like this. Guys, I love that track. You don't need to do anything to it. Unfortunately, it's been rejected. We, apparently, we need to do some tweaking. They don't like the yeah, yeah, yeah. bit. <laughs> that's exactly what it went. That's a little extract. That's an extra extract. Yeah, that extract was previously broadcast on BBC Two from there. No, Radio Two on the bank holiday. Uh, look at the beautiful sunrise there on the telly. It's the weather lady. I don't think you should tell the listeners we're watching telly. I'm not watching it. It's just on in the corner in that case you're anything telly. like you know, in case in case a, important news, a meteorite happens, yeah. or something. Uh, now it's time for my session track. This is from the John Peel sessions, and it's a track from uh 1997 15th of july when yola tango an american band from hoboken new jersey went into the bbc studios and laid down a few crazy tracks for john peel now this is a wonderful band 
well worth investigating. Joe Cornish, you were going to say What something? does it mean? What does Yola Tango mean? Yola Tango means I have it. In really? Yes. Wow. Ah. Uh, and uh, this is a track called Autumn Sweater. Enjoy! Yola Tango with Autumn Sweater from the John Peel Sessions. That's from 1997. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Time now for the news, read by Catherine and Lucy. Yeah, that's uh, Gold Frap with Train. We were trying to think while that was playing about uh, any other bands or outfits named after the surname of the lead singer. Yeah, I didn't realise that Alison Goldfrapp's real surname was Goldfrapp. I thought that might not be her real name. I thought she might have changed it by by Depot or whatever it is you do. I can't guarantee that she didn't change it. I th but I, I believe that that was her uh, given name, you know, her yeah, family so name. Yeah, so I was asking Adam, are, are there any other bands who are named after the lead singer's uh, surname? And Adam suggested Jonathan Stereophonics, uh, Billy the lead B singer of the Stereophonics. Lead singer of uh, Billy Bee Gees. Yep. Uh, any others, listeners? Maybe you know. By the way, you can text us at any point on 64046 or email us adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. Now, we should remind you of the extraordinary week-long uh, kind of voting phenomenon that's going on on the show. Uh, basically, me and Adam have written a song each. And we're asking you to listen to little clips of those songs and vote for which one you'd like played in its entirety on Friday's show. The it's like um, Sean Keaveney's feature, Band-Aid. Mm. In fact, it's the same feature, but instead of real bands, we've given you two little bogus bits of music. Mm. Uh, now, so we should play you these uh, snatches again. Um, to vote, you go to the BBC Six Music website. I'm not doing very well on this vote. In fact, Joe Cornish, with his ludicrous techno track, has accrued something like 64% of the vote so far. Currently, my my song has got 64%. Adams has got 36%. 36%. That's not bad, man. That is bad. I wouldn't say that the race is won yet. You know, there's a whole two days play to go. Is there or is it just today? The well, there's during the day tomorrow. The Basically, we're going to collate the figures at, at what point? Maybe the last hour of the show, we'll play it on Friday, so we'll collate the figures, you know, early morning tomorrow. So there's, it's all to play for. Don't give up, Ad. I am giving up. Listen, I'm worried <laughs> that maybe, because you've been playing my clip first, generally, right? Because it's Adam and Joe, so you play my clip. I want you to play Joe's clip first today, all right? Because I'm worried that maybe my the track my thing is no not, sense. I don't care. Usually people don't have the attention span. Oh, I see what you mean. Actually, that could be a point. It sticks in the head. Yeah, because the the last one they hear sticks in the head. Exactly. Or you see on 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 interactive voting shows. I usually think that the first person to feature in the clip montage has the advantage. Right. Because everybody leaps to the phone, the lines then become busy. Well, you can't vote for later ones. I, I want to switch it all around today. Perhaps people aren't changes. voting in, in the same numbers. Let's for have a this. look. Let's see if this. Changes. Hey, this is a clip from my song. Vote for this song. This is a kind of uh, techno track about shopping in European supermarkets. It's called European Supermarkets. Nice. Want somebody help me, please? That's the bit. Ah, oh, amazing. That bit. goes on for two minutes. It's brilliant. If you want to hear the whole of that, uh, just go to BBC Six Music and vote for Joe's song. I think I could be big bum, on the bum, techno bum. scene. With that noise, you could. I mean, I'm, I hate it's to admit it. It's not just the noise, man. It's That's the very noise. reductive. It is the noise. You haven't heard the full two-minute version. Of, um, and when you do, you'll eat your hat. What do you mean, when I do? I'm never going to hear it, because I'm going to win this, and no one will ever hear anything more than that tiny clip of your song. So here's the other track. Uh, what's this, Adam? This is called Jane's Brain, and it's a bit of classic rock about what goes on inside a lady's brain. She thinks her brain to think of things that she didn't have. She thinks of cars, and she thinks of fancy dresses, and she thinks of big houses, and she thinks of cars. <laughs> How I... very condescending to all women. <laughs> I think that's why it's not being voted for. Possibly. The lyrics seem to go, she used her brain, as if that's something that she doesn't do very often. This is just Jane. To think of things about. she didn't have. This is not all women. This is suggesting that all women uh, are in a sort of materialistic, <laughs> obsessive daze, and all they think about are cars and dresses and then cars again. Women yeah. don't care about cars. So not only have you insulted them, <laughs> you've got them all wrong. Anyway, so get voting now. Where do they go to vote? The BBC Six Music website. Six uh, Music. In, in this day and age, we don't give you the the kind of the URL. You just stick Six Music exactly. into Google. It'll be the top hit. There you go. Uh, navigate to our little site there, and voting's very very easy. 
now here's uh, a track from a band that i haven't actually heard before silver sun pickups they're big news though right and the guy from silver sun pickups is on round table with steve lamack it's all happening for the pickups and this is called lazy eye is he suggesting that the very thin stars on the red carpet what's he saying that they've like been absorbed by the carpet yeah they've slipped <laughs> through the carpet because it's turned into quicksand he's funny he's in, he's entertaining he's brilliant uh that's harry hill coming up on six music that'll be really good we recommend you listen to that this is adam and joe though uh on a more downbeat note on the breakfast show here uh until 10 o'clock for you now we were asking whether there were other bands that were named after the surname of the lead singer a bit like goldfrat yeah and and thanks listeners uh our listeners respond very promptly efficiently and thoroughly to all music related queries mm. this being six music can you not say query can't i no it's no. it's on the list the big british of castle ins r insulting words list of words that are no longer acceptable mm. okay okay um so here are some of the responses uh karen carpenter of course yeah carpenters named her band the carpenters i suppose you can have that I, although it's not exactly the same as goldfrat do you know what i mean it's like if it was called carpenter that would be different the carpenters it's not the same because then it's like the cause doesn't count yeah like if it was the whole gold frat family yeah and they called it the gold fraps that's not on that's not what we're talking about we're talking it's about just not as exciting a name is it like someone else texted in roachford that's what i'm talking about right but he's a solo singer he doesn't really have a band does he He did have a band i think i mean it was the same <clears> sort of situation <throat> as gold frat. maybe i'm wrong bon jovi is a good example yeah what about bon jovi says simon and kent Arge argent argent who are they argent yes they were around in the 70s i think the um, white stripes simon is also suggesting no wrong what they're called the stripes mr <laughs> and mrs stripe meg, aren't they? meg white stripes <laughs> and jack white stripes <laughs> yeah no uh and al in london uh this is one of my favorite ones says the the are named after the lead singer tim tim the which is not true that's but not true it'd be nice if it was <laughs> now um, joe it's uh, time for your session track what have you pulled out of the vaults yeah we're going back to 78 what a great year 78 was was it what were you doing in 78 it's the year after the jubilee wasn't it yeah. uh what was i doing i don't know probably probably collecting star wars cards That's right yeah probably playing around my friend alexander mcfarlane's house pretending that the bed in his spare room was a land speeder mm -hmm. and that his little brother was a sand person or an ewok or an ewok and throwing him off yeah 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 violently were you into smurfs around that stage yeah you? yeah i was collecting those sure smurfs. sure i was into smurfs yeah sure who was yeah i was all the way up into smurfs how many smurfs did you have uh my brother had the big smurf collection did he i probably had about five or six yeah five or six you disgust <laughs> me you disgust me why is that a lot that's or, or nothing. nothing that's not that's not even you say i say are you were you into smurfs you say yeah yeah i was into smurfs. And we then you weren't say, a I massive we weren't an enormously six. rich family like yours six. adam you could i've worked them. my way up to this position i haven't just been dropped here by chopper it like wasn't you. about riches anyway, it was about collecting them shush. from petrol stations Stop talking it's time for my archive session track uh this is back in 1978 this five is elvis six. costello uh, what five or six <laughs> elvis costello and the attractions with pump it up joe's pick of the bbc archive wow another uh, amazing uh session track there from the peel session elvis costello elvis costello and the attractions playing pump it up on the 13th of march 1978 now adam and i were just having a bit of a tizzy during that song because uh before the song we were discussing what what we were doing in 1978 and this is a query for for the more mature listeners i thought i told you about saying query sorry thank you i'm obsessed with queries inquiry inquiry quiz no you can't say quiz it's difficult isn't it um do you remember out there a a campaign by unigate milk in the mid to late 70s to do with stripy straws called humphreys now my brother was obsessed with these things uh basically you could leave a note out or maybe a bit of money for the milkman and he would leave uh kind of special straws that looked like barber's poles with a with a red stripe around them they were filled with strawberry powder that you put into your milk uh encourage you to drink them that the advertising slogan was watch out watch out there's a humphrey about uh these stripy straws would like march across the screen uh, see this is now what adam is saying i'm what saying, are you saying well i'm saying uh it's like news night here isn't it uh, but i'm saying 
that the Humphrey aspect of the whole thing was just part of the advertising campaign. It was like a phantom presence that was stealing the straws, stealing the straws, drinking the milk. Was Humphrey the straw itself? Me and my brother used to think the straws were called Humphreys. Well, I used to think that as as a totty as or well. Or was Humphrey? A guy that came, a kind of mysterious presence that stole the straws. Yeah, no, it was. It wasn't so much stealing the straws as just drinking all the milk and stuff. It was like, oh no, someone's drunk my milk because it was. It was all a, a campaign by Unigate Dairies to make the drinking of milk more attractive to uh, mm, young mm, people. Mm. You know? If you can help us with that, text six four zero four six or email Adam and Joe uh, dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk. What now? Music time? Yeah, here's the breaks with Pacific Visions. She's just got summer in her hair. That's disgusting. Um, that's Breaks with Beatific Visions. This is Adam and Joe here on Six Music, covering for us. Sean Keaveney while he's away. Only one more day. We've got tomorrow, and that's it for us. And then Sean's back with you next week. Now, uh, we, uh, we haven't had any um, texts about the Humphrey situation, have we yet? Uh, we have, but we're just collating them. Uh, Jenny and I are collating them. Doing a little collating. We're putting them through the various BBC scans. You know, it's strange because nowadays, of course, m uh, milk doesn't have the same cachet that it once did in the medical world. In fact, there's many respected medical professionals who'll tell you to avoid <laughs> milk altogether. Are there? Yeah, absolutely. Some people think You've it's been watching Undercover Mums again, raw haven't sewage. you? <laughs> <laughs> you and your Undercover Mums <laughs> obsession. Yeah. Right, now it's time for the news, and it's read by Catherine and Lucy. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. That was uh, Interpol with Mammoth. Uh, we're going to talk about Humphreys again in a second, but first, it's time for the serial thriller. This is the part of the show where you, uh, uh, so a listener calls in and chooses two tracks... Uh, to play back to back that give adam and i a chance to have a bit of breakfast um and on the line we've got marion mardell hello marion good morning how are you i'm fine this morning very good uh thank you bye-bye <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke uh marion where are you calling from from cardiff cardiff uh do you like living in cardiff i do i've been here a number of years now yeah yeah and what do you do for a living what are you going to do the rest of today i'm a nurse you're a nurse what kind of are you a angry nurse or a nice nurse <laughs> um probably a bit of both sometimes yeah oh she sounds really? like an angry one <laughs> she sounds you, like a you, frightening you nurse you caress with one hand and spank with the other <laughs> <laughs> is that right oh quite possibly yeah yeah do yeah. you smell very slightly of disinfectant <laughs> not at all not at all good i'm very <laughs> pleased to hear it <laughs> how long have you been a nurse mary Oh, well over 30 years. Oh, wow. Good Goodness. for you. Yeah. that's We up. here at the Adam and Joe Breakfast Show commend you. We salute you. We salute you. A nurse is one of those jobs, though. Uh, when you tell people you're a nurse, do you get this, Marion? They sort of go, yeah, that's a proper job. They're impressed. You is know? that oh, what yeah. happens when oh, you yeah. tell people you're a nurse, Adam? <laughs> that's why I... Yeah, exactly. That's why I tell people I'm a nurse. <laughs> you know, when I don't want to get into the whole thing of, well, I used to do a late night kind of comedy show on chat. You know what? I'm a nurse. I'm hey, a nurse. Marion, here's a question for you. Have you ever been, like, on a plane or in a non nursy situation and, like, saved somebody? Uh, not particularly. I've been asked... I went to someone on a train once when they asked for somebody with medical experience. <gasps> did you save them? Um, no. Uh, he, he decided... Well, I went to him and so did somebody else and the person, um, got off the train at the next station to get oh. attention. I thought it was going to end yeah. badly. Yeah, <laughs> it was going to be a downbeat story. <laughs> they got off the no, train. No, That's no, good. nothing That's heroic good. on a train. I was asked <laughs> to help, plane. but I decided not to and he died. Uh, <laughs> I thought that was the way the story was going to go. <laughs> and it, we've got here a, a sort of a fact sheet about you, Marion. It says your favourite film is Billy Elliot. Yeah, one of my favourites. I like anything sort of musical theatre, musical comedy. Now, have you seen the stage production of Billy Elliot? I haven't yet, no. Oh, you've got to see it. Yeah. Apparently, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. I went to see it. I thought, I'm not going to like this. Oh, what? I, I thought I'm going to... Where did you gonna... go and see it? Uh, <laughs> because my girlfriend's company did help do the publicity for it, right. and we could get free tickets. Oh. So I thought I'd go and see it. I thought, I'll walk out by the interval. I won't like this. Not at all. It was amazing. Yeah. Shivers down my spine. Brilliant. It was so exciting. It's really, really good. You'd love it, Marion. Yeah, I'm sure I will. And when I get this, there eventually. If this wasn't the BBC, we'd like arrange for tickets for you to go and see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. but it's is the BBC. We we'd solicit competitions, but there's no yeah. soliciting. Um, now, what kind of music have you picked out for us this morning, Marion? This morning, I've chosen for you Arcade Fire's "No Cars Go." Oh yeah! Now, are you a big fan of the of the band? 
Um, yeah, it's very different music. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We're going to see them in Cardiff in October, I believe. Have you seen them before? No. It's quite an experience. Sure. It's yeah, uh, sure. it, it's really sort of like a almost like a religious gathering. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, you'll really enjoy that. That's a great track. And uh, what's the other one you've picked? The for other us? one is um, "Burn My Shadow" by Uncle. Again, a very different band I'd never heard of before June. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't wait to buy the album when it came out in July. Who's getting you into all this crazy music, Marion? Oh, my husband has a big part to play here. Okay, what's his name? Andy. Andy, shout out to Andy. Maximum respect. Nice choices, <laughs> Marion. We're going to start with uh, the the Uncle Track Burn My Shadow. Thanks for calling. Thanks for listening, Marion. Yeah, You're welcome. Look, very nice to talk to you. Have a great day. And here's Burn My Shadow by Uncle. Thank you. Yes, this is Adam and Joe, uh, BBC Six Music, uh, The Breakfast Show. Before that, you heard a great serial thriller courtesy of Marion Mardell. Thanks, Marion. Burn My Shadow by Uncle and Arcade Fire with No Cars Go. I always feel a little embarrassed when I talk to people like nurses. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's like we're not good enough to, to talk to That's them. That's right, because I'm... Like, I just they feel should like... be above our kind of, you know, sink of trivial mulch. Yeah, our cathedral of ludicrousness. Um, anyway, it was really nice to talk to you, Marion, and uh, very much enjoyed those tracks. She brought a bit of class to the show. Lovely little bit. Look at that. Oh, beautiful nurse. Lovely nurse. Look at that nurse. Bringing a bit of class. <laughs> booga <laughs> booga. We're now removing it. But, uh, should we settle the whole Humphrey situation? Yeah, yeah. We were talking about, uh, the Humphrey campaign, a campaign by Unigate, the dairy, uh, that was on in the 70s, in the days when they used to deliver little glass milk bottles to your doorstep every morning. Mm. Probably still goes on in many parts of the country but certainly kind of stopped here in london unfortunately before they discovered that milk was indigestible sewage mm. <laughs> um they had a campaign to encourage kids to drink milk and we were a bit confused about the specifics of this campaign we knew there was something called a humphrey we weren't sure whether it was the straw itself adam was doubting that the actual straws existed joe was going on about straws filled with stripy straws stripy straws filled with strawberry powder that yeah, you stirred into yeah. your drink i didn't remember that part of it i thought that the humphrey element was just a sort of specter saying what you better drink your milk quick children otherwise humphrey's gonna come and steal it with his big long straw well you know we were both slightly right because that's true i don't think that humphrey was the straw itself humphrey was the kind of uh off-screen spectre mm. who kind of had a really long straw that he would extend into the frame of the advert like phil spectre yeah and dip into the milk and steal the milk of either rod hull or frank muir or whoever was in the advert mm. Um, and in fact, thanks to the magic of YouTube, you can see those adverts quite easily. Yeah, we just had a look at the Rod Hull and Emu one, and it very clearly shows you that uh, there are strawberry powder-filled straws mm. that you can mm. purchase. 10p, you get three straws. Three for 10p. Not bad. My older brother, a couple of years older, uh, he coveted his stripy straws uh, to a ludicrous extent. Mm -hmm. He kept them all he refused to drink them and open them he kept them all he thought they'd uh, increase in value enormously <laughs> <laughs> as a kind of investment we we were about like three and five at this point and so he he hid them under a floorboard in his bedroom <laughs> right. uh, together with a sheet of humphrey stickers that you got free from from the milkman yeah and uh, i was so jealous of those straws right when he went out to play with friends i used to go round and open up his secret floorboard and ah. look at them and uh, consider stealing them just look at them you never actually nicked one maybe i did oh you dirty i might have and i remember they were there until he was about 17. <laughs> so he did keep them for about 11 years oh, they're man. probably still there and then one night had a strawberry milk crazy party, party and uh, yeah he maybe. snorted strawberry milk powder off a pop star's boobs nice uh that's something that we can all look forward to if we get sufficiently successful now here's one of your favorite bands joe yeah uh, is it yeah oh yeah this is ben folds five this is a great track this is brick Ben Falls 5 with Brick. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Now on Monday, Sean W. Keevney is back, and he's got a new feature uh, that we'd like to encourage you to uh, to kind of get in touch about. He's it's got called a... Happy Days. Oh. What, uh, were you thinking he'd had surgery? No, I thought he had the third nipple. Really? Yeah, I thought you yeah. were talk about that. No, okay. that's a secret. That's a secret feature. Uh, his new feature is called Happy Days, uh, and he wants you to let him know about a track that has got some kind of special meaning or memory attached to it. You didn't even tell people how Happy Days was spelt. With a Z. It's You're right, that is important. with a Z. Because that's, you know, Days. distinguishes it from the yeah. entertaining program about <clears> the 50s. 
Exactly. Uh, so there you go. If you've got a track that makes you feel really happy, got lovely memories attached to it, go to the Six Music website, click on the Happy Days link. You have to fill in a brief form. It'll ask for your national insurance, <laughs> your insurance number, your income, you know, all sorts of personal details like that. You'll the, be vetted by a team of BBC uh, researchers. Agents. Yeah. Um, and, and if you're successful, you know, maybe you'll get a track played on the show and you'll get to speak to him on the phone and stuff. It'll be wicked. We're, jo we're joking, of course, not about the whole feature, but it's very, very easy to um, get on there and get your track uh, yeah. requested. So uh, check out the BBC Six Music website. And um, also, of course, you should be voting for our Band-Aid tracks. More about that in a while. But now here's a bit more music. Here's Jefferson Airplane with White Rabbit. Ooh, crazy drugs, crazy. <laughs> Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. It's, yeah, that's the jingle that set the nation on fire. Set the nation literally on fire. And uh, there's a big fire situation now, and the uh, police are trying to put out the fire using... Hey, that's insensitive, because there was a fire in one of the royal parks yesterday. Uh, so how insensitive? That's very insensitive. <laughs> uh, it is, of course, time for the nation's favourite feature. It's Text the Nation, uh, the important part of the show, where we ask you to respond to a special question. Uh, we accept your texts uh, on 64046. And, of course, as the jingle made perfectly clear, we will accept emails as well. To so. Adam and Joe, all one word, with A-N-D, not an ampersand, dot six, the number six, music at bbc.co.uk, the world's most complicated email address. Now, today we are talking about times in your life when you thought you were so cool when in fact you were absolutely nothing of the kind. You were an idiot, yeah. Um, maybe it was a time, say, five or ten years ago. Maybe it was a time when you were a teenager, or when you were kind of a, kind of a different kind of a person, mm. and you thought you were being the coolest person in the world, but now in retrospect you realise with a so sort of shiver of, of fear that you were a complete twas twas twazzle twizzle now uh, i reckon the holy grail of this text the nation would be to mm. find someone who is up for admitting that actually they did a little cool gaff really quite recently you know what i mean right because most of the ones that i can recall just initially are from my teenage years that's when you make most of your errors yeah. your cool errors so let's give a couple of examples um I used to go on holiday in Devon mm -hmm. to a little uh, town called Dulverton, a beautiful town. And you thought it was so cool to go on holiday in Devon. <sighs> no. They had, Sorry. every summer, they had a kind of a festival, uh, a street party. Yeah. And I forget which summer it was, but it was the summer that uh, Come On Eileen by Dex's Midnight Runners came out. 81. And there was a disco in the street. They played that track very loudly. 82. And I danced like I'd never danced before. Right. Leaping around doing amazing moves i was possessed by a some kind of dancing spirit demon yeah and i danced so amazingly that a big space cleared <laughs> in the street party <laughs> there was like a, a radius of say 10 meters around me no, right. i was leaping around i was thinking wow my dancing amazing Every everybody's watching this is amazing everyone's looking at me and uh <laughs> I went over to my mum, like mid-dance, I went, God, this is really fun, mum. <laughs> and she said, mm, yes, you're, you're a really good dancer, Joe. Oh. You're dancing so stylish. <laughs> <laughs> I remember her saying, yeah. I carried on dancing, it was incredible, cleared the whole dance floor. Now, of course, I realised <laughs> I, I, I was just an idiot, I was dancing like some kind of epileptic squid. People had to back away just to keep themselves physically safe. <laughs> and god knows what they were saying about me in the crowd yeah but you know there's an example at the time i thought i was kind of um john travolta mm -hmm. now i realize i was in terrible terrible social trouble <laughs> <laughs> i think that sounds sweet i bet your mum was digging it she was or probably... 
maybe I was really good. Maybe. Maybe the dancing was incredible. Well, this is the thing. There's always the chance with these things, you know, that uh, actually it's it's sometimes it's just a natural impulse to be mm. a little embarrassed of things you've done. Actually, maybe you were onto something. Give us your example, Adam. Well, one thing I, I often think about is uh, one of my many fashion faux pas. In fact, a friend of mine the other day was looking through some photographs of me and he, uh, we were looking through some old pics and stuff. And he was like, man, the clothes you used to wear. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, you used to turn up in some pretty weird stuff. And I just never, did, I never thought of myself like that <laughs> at all. I just always thought I was fairly normal, but I would do, I would occasionally wear sort of slightly stupid things. Like I went through a phase of wearing uh, kind of very big, high top Dr. Martin boots, mm. very highly polished up with white socks, big, thick white socks, <laughs> <laughs> which I would well, pull. This wasn't that long ago. I either. Pull right this was up. early 20s uh early 20s yeah th th this was uh, a about 15 years ago you know at school you used to sometimes dress <laughs> yeah, like yeah. a kind of a rock priest rock priest quite a short rock priest yes you had a very long <laughs> coat that made you sort of look a bit like a uh, some kind of stop motion character that didn't have any feet <laughs> yeah and yeah. then you'd wear a a collarless shirt with the top button done up mm. and well you know, what i wanted to look like was david byrne in stop making mm. sense i thought that's that's what i'm like except instead of david byrne I, you know i was the physical opposite of david byrne i was short and squat yeah and uh, you looked like donald boo <laughs> <laughs> So I'd go around in my with my top button done up and I'd wear like a black jacket one of my dad's old black mm. suit jackets and uh, I think I'm exactly like David Byrne and then I would start embellishing and one night I remember I went to the pub with a friend of mine there was a pub that would serve us even though we were underage and um, we went there and I thought I'm gonna make a splash in the pub tonight with a fashion idea and I got a load of safety pins and mm. I made a chain out of the safety pins <laughs> and I pinned one end of the chain to my left shoulder and then i pinned the other end to my right shoulder so it was just a kind of you were like colonel clips yes <laughs> you were like the general of the of the stationary army <laughs> decorated for services to fashion uh and the guy at the pub who was like a big old bloke he just stared at me and then he he laughed <laughs> he just laughed to himself and he's like well you're prepared for any emergency aren't you so we're not specifically talking about fashion faux pas that would be too narrow we're just talking about times you thought with a coup times you thought you were the coolest person in the world but in retrospect you realize you were an idiot text 64046 or email adam and joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk uh is it time for some editors it certainly is an end has a start that's editors with an end has a start uh tom smith the lead singer of editors will be on steve lamack's show from uh tomorrow from 4 p.m here on bbc six music that's exciting isn't it it's good news for editors fans certainly now um the breakfast single of the week this week is one that's been chosen by joe cornish yes it's king creosote with you've no clue do you uh and yeah that we're gonna play it right now sounds very good that show i'm gonna be listening to that one. Oh, look it's my favorite ad that was just on the telly in the corner here in the studio it was the lone advert where the woman is filming her husband stroke boyfriend while he asks for a loan because that's something you know that's a memory that you want to keep always <laughs> <laughs> do you remember when we were so hard up things were so bad that you had to ask for a loan oh yeah they should times. pawn that camcorder for a start and he's having a good time and he's chuckling away and it's a really it's a fun afternoon you know hey should we ask for a loan again because the last time we did it was a laugh yeah go on let's let's ask for a loan then we'll get a takeaway and uh go to bed and make sweet love uh there you go anyway um we are testing texting the nation or asking the asking the nation to text us about times you thought you were being cool when in fact in retrospect it appears that you were nothing of the kind and we've got a few people who've been uh, communicating with us is that right joe yeah yeah we've had some good texts uh here's one from bev in london uh this is a good one she says in the swimming baths once I started humming memories from cats. Some kids gathered to hear. <laughs> so I began to sing out loud. 
So he started with the humming. Wait a second. Mm-hmm. Some kids gathered to hear. <laughs> Listen to that humming. There's a lady she's over humming. there. She's humming. Mm-hmm. We, we don't know whether she was a kid or an adult either. We hope she was a kid. That's but maybe she was an adult for extra embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> the kids gather. And alone in the moonlight. So I began to sing out loud. Then do arm gestures. <laughs> I Boy. thought I was a wonderful actress. When I finished, the kids just drifted away, <laughs> looking depressed, <laughs> like they'd seen their future. <laughs> so she was an adult. She is an adult. Is, is Bev. It, is that wow, that's brave of you to confess. Bev, that's just a pseudonym. It's actually from <laughs> Elaine Page. It's from Bez. <laughs> that's extraordinary. That's exactly the kind of thing we're looking for. <laughs> wow. Here's another one from Rob in Birmingham. At a school disco, I sang the song Under the Boardwalk as an homage to the Bruce Willis version yes. that was popular at the time. For extra coolness, I asked to be introduced as Bruno. Nice. As it came from the awful Return of Bruno album by Bruce, <laughs> I thought it would make me popular with the girls. Good idea. Wow, I bet you wish you had that on video <laughs> instead excellent. of all your loan applications. Who's that from? That's from Rob in Birmingham. That's excellent, Rob. And here are some more sort of smaller ones. Uh, James in Rochester reminding us of the existence of global hypercolor t-shirts. Mm. They were big like in the early 90s when raving and all that business was popular. That's right. And they were kind of uh, heat sensitive, heat reactive. I think they probably still exist. Yeah. But when your body heated up, they changed color in a sort of psychedelic way. That's right. But unfortunately, what would happen is... It would just mean you'd get big purple emanations from your armpits. <laughs> yeah. And then you'd sweat a lot, so you'd get one kind of wave of colour that was just sweaty blackness, and then a kind of a mildewy, greeny yellow radiating from that. Um, yeah, they were a bad idea. That was around the time of uh, magic eye uh, paintings as well, wasn't it? Yeah, maybe a little earlier. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Yeah, maybe yeah. you're right. Uh, here's another one from Stephen Staines. This is a contemporary story. A teacher friend of mine tried to get in with the kids by referring to the well-known rapper 50%. Nice. <laughs> His cred really went up. <laughs> if he was a maths teacher, that would actually be quite a good way to teach maths. Yeah, yeah. Well, if he was the uh, leader of the Tory party, that would be a legitimate way of <laughs> canvassing support <laughs> as well. So uh, keep them coming in. Uh, text your stories of when you thought you were really cool, but in retrospect, you were the exact opposite. Text 64046 or email Adam and Joe dot six music at BBC dot co dot UK. Uh, Joe, here's a song from Manson. And uh, this may be shocking to you, but it's about a stripper vicar. Quite right. Uh, Manson there exposing the scandalous ease with which strippers can get away with uh, vickering, or indeed vickers can get away with strippering. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. It's time for the news with Catherine and Lucy. Oh, so ironical, man. It's like a big irony cake with uh, irony icing and uh, like a big ironical um, candle. candle on the top of it. We're playing that Amy Winehouse track as a public service. Of course, you're not allowed to buy her records anymore. It'll only encourage her to spend the money on bad things. Uh, so we're letting you hear the music for free in order to keep you happy and her safe. That's true, exactly. BBC working for Britain there. Um, this is Adam and Joe on Six Music on The Breakfast Show, filling in for Sean W. Keaveney. It's our penultimate show. Tomorrow will be our last show. It's going to be a big show. It's going to be like Christmas Day tomorrow. It's going to be amazing. Friday, it's going to be like Cracker Jack mixed in with the premiere of Star Wars. Oh, wow. And, uh, and a big rock and roll show with the Arctic Monkeys playing. Headlining. Wow. And uh, and David Bowie as a support act. Yeah, cl- David Bowie cleaning up, cleaning up the um, mess. And at the end of tomorrow, you will hear played in full <gasps> the winner of oh. the Band Aid musical face-off between my, myself and Joe. Uh, we urge you to go to the Six Music website now. BBC Music, a uh, BBC. Oh, you know, don't just, bother. Don't just bother. go find the Six Music. We just type in Six Music, you'll find it, and you can vote for the track by joe or myself on that website there and joe is at the moment in the lead folks despite the fact that his effort rests entirely on the attractive sound of I one i can't believe you keep saying this it's so stab. rude it's true and insulting i know i'm being I, i'm just playing dirty because i'm so far you behind playing dirty it'll it'll you know it won't work i know you'll regress it i know i you, just people can't won't sympathize with such, and such an gonna... evil man it's true isn't it <laughs> Oh. Listen, you can listen to samples from both the tracks on the Six Music website and you can make an informed decision without relying to the canton bile of a jealous loser. 
The Canton Bile of a Journalist <laughs> Loser. <laughs> That's a type of medieval uh, song structure, isn't it? Yeah. Canton Bile. Anyway, uh, you join us in the middle of Text the Nation. It's our special feature where we ask you to text us and we read them out. It's something no other show does. We invented it. We invented this. And it's exciting. So we've been asking you today to text us in with uh, stories about when you thought you were super cool, but in the end were actually a super fool. Super fool. I just remembered that I used to, I had a number of makeup decisions that I made. Yeah, you went through a phase. This was even post, well, I, I guess, let's start this from the beginning. I mean, everyone, when they're a teenager and their skin goes funny, mm. considers using makeup. Mm -hmm. If they're a man, uh, because there are those Clearasil products that, that basically are sort of medicated makeup. Yeah. If you're going to put that on your spots, why not go the whole hog and slap on some foundation, some eyeliner, some lippy and a wig? I didn't do foundation <laughs> and lippy and a wig. I was going too far for comic effect. But I did do the other ones because my mum one day handed me her cover-up stick, you know? Um, you can, what, that's yeah. what I was talking about, medicated foundation kind but of But it thing. wasn't medicated foundation, it was just foundation foundation. Okay. And she said, there you go, this is a little trick that uh, us women use when we're looking a bit rough and uh, just cover up that spot with this, you'll be sorted. And then I thought, this is amazing, it's a miracle cure. Uh, and, and so I nicked it. I, I nicked it off her and then I started experimenting with all the other things you could uh -oh. do with the cover-up stick. What and else can you do with it? The first thing I did was use it as lippy. <laughs> what? To try and eradicate your mouth? To make my lips look kind of white and blanched. Um, like, as if I was a sort of robot man. Uh, what, at school? Yeah. Or on a night out? On a night out, generally. Really? And then I would... <laughs> and then <laughs> I would... you want to do that? I would embellish... I don't know, because there was something... Sometimes you see it, it's a look, you know, your lips are all... I suppose it's a kind of a Gary Newman type thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm a, yeah. like a Newmanoid. I know what you mean. And I put a little bit of eyeliner on there as well, because I thought maybe I looked like the guy from uh, clockwork orange yeah it's amazing <laughs> how it, it's amazing <laughs> how important it is to look really futuristic when you're learning b maths yeah and i'd stand there on the platform at earl's court station and i would think genuinely to myself i'm pretty cool and i imagine that a lot of people are looking at me right now and thinking look at that kind of robot androgene i tell it's you cool. um, i tell you one thing that ev that a lot of people probably did mm is uh when they were kids and when you were running along the pavement yes. did you ever make that tactical decision <laughs> to like uh instead of running with your fists clenched you'd think wow if i extend my palms into like blades i bet you i'll, I'll be more aerodynamic i'll run a bit faster that's right yeah i used to think i could run so fast that people were looking at me and and suspecting i was bionic yeah well you are partly bionic it's true yeah. yeah now joe it's time for your Just free choice that's Sorry? <laughs> Bionic nutties. Uh, it's time for your free choice, and you've picked a French band. Yes, it's a French band. I like it, a French band. La musique de France. Yeah, uh, il s'appelle... Uh, 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 it's called You Can Blame It On Anybody. It's by a band called Phoenix, and while you listen to this, imagine the lead singer making love to Sophia Coppola, because that's what he does. That's what he does for a living. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. I like that Phoenix track there, Joe. What was it? There was loads of people in the background. <laughs> I was just thinking maybe I should have play played their previous single. The backing singers going... <laughs> you know, they don't... They, they just get thick people to do their backing vocals. Phoenix. You know, uh, Aphex Twin, that Window Licker single was very similar. It had similar yeah. kind of breathy... <laughs> but he made a sort of advantage of a bit better, didn't he? Doing it all one calls. Anyway, that's just a sort of uh, Phoenix taste of their previous single was a bit better than that one. Their last album was very good. Yeah, they are good. They're called Phoenix. They're from France. They're from France. They like it. They're, they're not they like ladies. What is the problem? <laughs> what is the big problem? I like ladies. So what? Why is it so bad? Oh. Can we have the text the nation jingle? Just to clear the air. Oh, yeah. I like ladies. Why is it a big problem all of a sudden that I like women? Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Yes, it's time for Text the Nation, the uh, feature when we ask you to text us in about things. Um, here are some texts we've got. The theme today is uh, moments when you thought you were super cool, but in retrospect you realise you were an idiot. Here's one from Sam in the Wirral. Ooh. When I was about ten, I went through a slightly obsessive phase of eating bread in one go. 
That is, folding the bread, then stuffing each piece into my mouth and chewing. One day, a slightly older, significantly cooler boy saw me doing this and thought it was the most amazing thing he'd ever seen. For about two years following, I had older boys coming to me asking to eat pieces of bread they bought me. <laughs> what? So they were bringing him bits of yeah, bread? Yeah, hey, I hear you eat bread in a cool way. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a piece. Show us. Demonstrate. At the time, I thought it was because I was so hip. But with hindsight, I feel I was the center of a warped bread fetish. Yeah. Oh. Maybe they were just taking the mickey out of you. <laughs> exactly. Hey, bread freak. Oh, it he... does sound quite cool, actually. I'm picturing it. Wow. <laughs> he folds it up yeah. into a ball, and then he shoves it into his mouth. I mean, I used to do bread balls. I used to pull the crust off and then do a squidgy ball from the... I think it's just the ensuissance of just eating a whole bit of bread. <laughs> I mean, only a man could do that kind of thing that's true isn't only it? a powerful man it's like when i first went to new york and first had a like a new york pizza i remember my american friend he took a slice of the pizza and he folded it in half mm. and just shoved it in his mouth like a big sandwich like a calzone yeah i thought that was the coolest thing i'd ever seen mm. it's a similar kind of thing isn't uh, do it do you still eat your pizza that way ever yeah since? i like to it gives me a, a bit of a thrill well you don't ball it up in one piece and <laughs> shove it in your mouth in one go like bread boy though do yes you? i don't no i don't <laughs> here's another one uh, thanks that was sam in Wirral. that was very good um, we're not going to read that one out. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a second. Here's one from Gil Kelsall. I think that's right. Or Jill, I'm not sure. Now of Reading. Picture the scene, dot, dot, dot. A rather rotund, incredibly short 11-year-old riding around the mean streets of Hull on a second-hand burgundy shopper bicycle with a back pedal brake with a basket on the front. In said basket, there is an enormous stereo. The ones where the batteries are the girth of a small child's thigh. <laughs> Blasting out at some considerable volume is Give It Up by KC and the Sunshine yeah. Band. Yeah. That was me. It was 1984. I thought this was cool. I was sorely mistaken. I don't think he was mistaken. No, he sounded she. very cool. Na -na 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 Jillian, it's a now, shoe. Baby, give it yeah, up. That's give cool. It. That is cool. That would be cool now as well as then. Now, it, you said shopper. Is that not a mis... A sh no, a shopper bicycle, no. It's, 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 it, he's not saying like chopper with a kind of... We're like... A man, they get shopper. I was riding my shopper. shopper. It's no, it's shopper. it's like a bicycle with a big pannier, so you can so you can have your shopping in it. Got you. It's an uncool bicycle, but the, I think that sounds perfectly cool. It sounds like the opening sequence to some Spielberg, you know, absolutely suburban Spielberg. That's romantic, man. You know, one time I just remembered this with the bread freak there, um, thinking that I was the coolest because I was watching Top of the Pops in mm. the school common room one time. Mm -hmm. It was on. I used to go to a boarding school, and uh, uh, the highlight of Thursday evenings was b uh, being allowed to watch Top of the Pops. And uh, Ultravox's Vienna mm. was uh, at number two in the charts, held off the top spot by Joel Dolce. Mm, uh, rightly so. Shut up your face. And um, the video for Vienna was amazing, as you'll recall. It was like a cinematic masterpiece. We were describing it yesterday, I believe. Were we? Yeah, in relation to the editor's music. To oh, editor's yes. Music. Yes, like, exactly. Uh, long coats and um, grey yeah, skies. Yeah. And I was doing the drumming. I was doing air drumming. Do, 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 do. Like just drumming in the air with my hands. That's cool. And I was watching the screen, but I was very much aware that some people were watching me. Do you know mm. what I mean? Mm. So I was thinking, uh, and, and I, it was like I was completely wrapped. Do, 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 do. And I was right on the beat <laughs> with my air drumming. And this guy, one of the seniors, was watching me. And he was stood by the TV and he went, <sighs> Look at this guy. Look at this guy down here doing this drumming. He's amazing. Look at him. And I just thought, <laughs> wow, I'm the coolest. What I'm leaving out of this story is that he was the biggest dork in the whole <laughs> school, this guy. Well, that's okay. You didn't want any props from this bloke. Now, uh, Joe, it's time to get into the gravel pit. Oh, this is fantastic. The music's been quite good this morning. We've had boops by Sly and Robbie. Yesterday we had Tribe Called Quest. Now we've got some Wu. This is the Wu-Tang Clan with Grab. That is Frente with Bizarre Love Triangle. What a lovely little sound that was. I was waiting for it to kick in though. Um, it, it wasn't going to. No, I never did. Anyway. They do not do the kicking. I don't like the kicking. I don't like it. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Just coming up to 9.30, the last half hour of our show. And tomorrow it's the final show uh, all sorts of special things happening, including the unveiling of the winner of the Band-Aid competition, Adam and, my, uh, Adam and my sort of songs we've written going up against each other. Uh, so that'll be exciting. And as it's our final show tomorrow, listeners, you can wear what you want.
Yeah, exactly. No need to wear your Adam and Joe breakfast show uniforms. Uh, you can come in in mufti. And what's more, you can bring in some games if you yeah. like uh, board well, that's games. One of our texters suggested. Uh, who was it? It was um, in Innes. I double N E S. Innes. Innes. I don't. Innes. Uh, from. Innes. From. Why stop moving it, Jenny? I've lost it now. <laughs> I had it a second. You screw. Stop it. Ooh. Where is it? Now I've lost it. Yeah, there we go, in Teddington. Good morning, Adam and Joe. As tomorrow is your last show on Six Music, can we bring a toy from home? Yes, you can. You can, yeah. You can, yeah, absolutely. As long as it's clearly marked with your name mm. on the underside. Um, now, pretty much we're going to wrap up, I think, uh, Text the Nation. With another couple of quickies? Yeah. Here's a quickie. No! Lisa says no, we've got to go to the news <gasps> right now. We'll wrap it up after the news. Here is the news with Catherine and Lucy. Maximo Park with Girls Who Play Guitars. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music, covering for Sean Keaveney for the rest of today. And there's only tw 20 minutes left of that for our show. And then uh, we'll be back with you tomorrow. And that's it. Sean's back next week. You'll be glad to hear if uh, Sean's your man. Joe Cornish, have you got a couple more texts hey. to wrap up our text nation? Yeah, we've got a couple more. Today? Here's one from Kerry. Of course, listeners, we've been asking you to get in touch with us with moments in which you thought you were cool, but actually, in retrospect, realise you were a fool. Here's one from Kerry. This is quite an interesting one. After finding out I needed glasses at 12, I persuaded my mum to let me get tinted lenses mm. to fool people into thinking... I was wearing sunglasses. Shades, nice. Now, I remember kids at school who did that. Yeah, they and got prescription shades, but they were a little bit too cool. To yeah. Be just functional. So they were tinted. I used to think they were just partially sighted. Mm -hmm. uh, it used to give them a kind of a Mr. Magoo feel. Sometimes people, I remember someone turning up with aviator shades. Really? Yeah. Wow. Didn't Omar Fadley turn up with aviator shades? Very one probably. <laughs> And when he was asked to take them off by the teacher, he'd go, no, because they're actually uh, prescription yeah, lenses. Exactly. <laughs> Quite a crafty tactic. Yeah, I actually did think that was cool. You know, s sunglasses are a funny thing because every time you put them on, I mean, they're great in a way because obviously they, they fulfill a, a, a useful purpose, but a uh, useful function even. But you do think you're cool when you're wearing them, though, don't you? Mm. A little bit of you is. Well, thinking. they make you mysterious. Yeah. Who could, no one can see your eyes. Who knows what you're thinking? Who knows? The eyes are the window to the soul, and you shut that window because you've got no soul because you're too cool. Too cool to have a soul. You've seen too much killing and <laughs> too many wars. <laughs> you know, you've lived too much. Yeah. And um, I've seen a couple of pictures. I mean, you know, maybe it's just because I'm getting a bit older now. But mm. the pictures of me from last summer wearing my shades no i don't look cool anymore really yeah i still look cool like this year i suddenly thought oh no i don't look cool in shades you know what i mean like anyone can look cool in shades this year it wasn't working really oh man i felt so ancient i have developed a thing where i just don't care anymore have you i lost my shades i had to buy some at uh, short notice so i bought this really ugly pair uh, <laughs> and the brand is animal and they've got the word animal in gold along the side of the uh the, yeah. the sticks you know <laughs> and they're horrible they're really pinched <laughs> they make me look like some kind of giant insect <laughs> and i just don't care <laughs> yeah. anymore i used to have a pair of shades actually this was one time i did think i was cool and i clearly wasn't do you remember those uh, circular shades thomas dolby used to Lenin shades Lenin shades right but in the early 80s there would be an extra pair of shades <gasps> that's that right that would, flip <laughs> that would down. Flip down you can still get those i bet you what can get those top? in camden market places that's like that that's the kind of thing the pet shop boys might have worn that's it. super cool and if you're in the middle of a sentence and wanted the second half of the sentence to have particular effect <laughs> you could flick the top layer down flick the top layer down <laughs> yeah now here is uh, euros charles we've been oh iros oh we had the iros we euros don't know how today. to say his name still eros iros euros okay pick take your pick of how you want to pronounce his name this is exciting because his new album the miracle in is the album of the day here on six music so tracks will be being played from it all day and it's a, a wonderful album this track is called horse riding that's brilliant brilliant oh that is wicked stuff man that is euros Childs, eros Childs, whatever uh with a track called horse riding from his new album miracle in and that album is out this week and available for you to purchase in the record shops and it's going to be played uh tracks from it all day does that make sense as a sentence and it's going to be played tracks from it all day six music on it in it that is good enough yeah the kids, the kids understand that days. no one goes to record shops and buys things man what are you talking yeah, about yeah they do physical no, oh, no us, does, us old people do no one does the physical we love us old people purchase. still love to go into shops 
and wander around and look at things and touch them. But do you actually do the physical purchasing? Yeah, I do actually. Are you? I yeah. thought you were a doctor online. No, I like to own an album. Right. Especially if it's someone like Eros Eros Oros Child. Yeah. Yeah? Because he he has He's got lovely sleeve designs. Nice little bit of packaging. And it means that if my computer crashes yeah. or goes corrupt, I'll still have a backup. Absolutely. You know? right. Good thinking, Joe. Absolutely thinking ahead. good thinking. Yeah, I like that. Um, do you like the Inspiral carpets? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to enjoy this one, then. This is a classic from the oh, carpets. I'll be off to the loo. This is how it feels. Bye. That's more like a torture than a trail now. When are they going to tell us what the original Baby Love sounded like? Oh, well, you got to listen to the show. They're find haranguing them. us repeatedly about that. This is Adam and Joe here on Six Music. Uh, Anita Rani's coming up shortly in a in a round about quarter of an hour, and she's got the band Architecture in Helsinki from Melbourne, Australia, actually playing live in the hub. Yeah. that's exciting. They're we can just about band. see the corner of the hub from our studio here, and there's all kinds of uh, thrilling-looking people setting up amazing equipment. Uh, you're saying, Adam, that that band are a bit like. Uh, a bit like the Talking Heads or that kind of thing? Well, no, not exactly. But they've got, like, sort of, um, you know, what's it called? Uh, Tom Tom Club era Talking Heads. Right. That kind of thing. Uh, there's, you can hear some little elements of that in their music, but that pins it down too specifically. They're a really good band. You should check them out. And they'll be playing live in the hub on Anita Rani's show. Uh, now, it's time for my free choice today. This is Bob Dylan with a track from um, uh, an album called Another Side of Bob Dylan and it's uh, uh, it's called Spanish Harlem Incident. It's pretty stripped down. You'll enjoy it. Amazing lyrics in this one and even though it was late 60s or whatever, it sounds amazingly contemporary. I'll be the judge of that. Yeah. Stick it on. Enjoy. Bob Dylan there. That was Adam's free choice. Uh, Spanish Harlem Incident. That was amazingly stripped down and it had amazing vocals. <laughs> it was good, man. And the lyrics like from that, you, you can't, you can't beat that. That's what I meant, lyrics. On the crest of your wildcat charms I'm riding, he's the king. I don't think there's any point in really saying that Bob Dylan's no good. Do you know what I mean? Fair enough if you don't like him, if he's not your cup of tea. But every now and again you meet people and say, Bob Dylan, what a phony. He's totally overrated. It's just not true, man. He's wicked. My uh, parents used to have some Bob Dylan singles. They also used to have some Dylan Thomas poetry yeah. being read on 7-inch. So anything Dylan-based. I got very confused. Right. I used to think Dylan Thomas and Bob Dylan, they were both poets. Mm. Uh, they were both weird and kind of foreign-sounding. That's why Dylan chose the name. very confused. Is it really? Yeah. There you go. He, he, he reveled in the confusion. Now, uh, it's time for a bit of music. Well, we almost have to say goodbye to you. Anita no. Rani's coming up very shortly as i said architecture in helsinki playing live in the hub in her show but right now here's a bit more music from a digitalism this is a track called idealistic and there's a lot of frightening futuristic sounds in this so watch out the music of the future can only be listened to by robots yeah it's like in the terminator when the world's being blasted by the jenny. machines this is the kind jenny. of that's the sort of what are you saying jenny <laughs> what's she called in the terminator she's not called jenny linda <laughs> what's she called <laughs> jenny she is isn't she sarah, sarah that's right sarah sarah, sarah. jenny you forget that that's jenny. the character that's because i've been listening to that song by tongue that goes jenny Jenny. Someone out there will understand that. Jenny. Um, well, that's pretty much it for our show today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for listening. We've really appreciated it. Yeah, um, thanks to everyone who's texted and, and, uh, sorry to interrupt you there. Uh, I was talking absolutely. <laughs> that's <laughs> why I interrupted <laughs> to talk my own rubbish. Yeah. Um, thanks to everyone who's emailed and texted and listened. It's our final show for our little filling in session. Uh, tomorrow and don't forget we'll be unveiling the winner of the band-aid competition but first you have to vote for the winner okay yeah. you have to go onto the six music website locate the page that uh, the adam and joe page there and you'll be able to choose either my track jane's brain or joe's track european supermarket you can listen to little snippets of each uh, the tips of both of those musical icebergs and decide which iceberg you'd like unveiled towards the end of the show uh, tomorrow. Please, it's going to be an amazing show Please tomorrow. vote for my iceberg. I'm not saying make me win, just so it's not totally humiliating. You know what we might do tomorrow? What? Prepare something. Yeah. Just as it's the last show. How really? about that? Yeah. Sort of think of something before we come into the studio. And yep. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, we won't. All right. Uh, so we'll see you tomorrow morning from 7 a.m. till 10. Thanks for listening. Stick around uh, for Anita Rani. Yeah, with have a good day. in Helsinki playing in the hub. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>